It's devastating what's happening in Hawaii and continues. So sad. The uh, death toll there, 36, and that's could right. go up. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. That's the breaking news we begin with this hour, and it is out of Hawaii. We're just catastrophic and unprecedented wildfires, as Victor said, have killed at least 36 people. That death toll is in Maui, and it soared overnight. Bodies were found in the ruins. Take a look at what's left. Lahaina. It's a historic town, a very popular vacation spot. The fast-moving inferno wiped out entire neighborhoods, and people jumped into the ocean to escape the flames. The fire was fueled in part by powerful winds from a hurricane. Take a look at this video obtained by our local affiliate. What you can see there is hurricane-force winds whipping palm trees and explosions as a marina and boats go up in flames. Let's take a look at that devastation on the ground. These are just hulls of homes. The neighborhoods, the businesses burned to the ground. Listen to the survivor describe the, the situation. Still get dead bodies in the water floating and on the seawall. They've been sitting there since last night. We've been pulling people out since last night, trying to save people's lives. And I feel like we're not getting the help we need. This is a nationwide issue at this point. Yeah, we need help, a lot of help. We got to get people down here. Veronica Miracle joins us live in Maui, where it is the middle of the night. So you haven't even seen the extent of the destruction. We'll see that when the sun comes up. But what can you tell us being on the ground? That's exactly right, Poppy and Victor. Uh, the death toll information also coming in overnight. So many people here on the island of Maui will be waking up to the news that 36 of their community members, loved ones, friends have died. That fire in Lahaina is one of three fires currently burning on the island here. Firefighting efforts continue as well as search and rescue efforts. Oh my gosh, look at the harbor. The view from above is of shock and heartbreak. Oh my gosh. We were not prepared for what we saw. It looked like an area that had been bombed in the war. Wildfires rampaging across the island of Maui. Our entire street was burned to the ground. Decimating homes and businesses. Local people have lost everything. They've lost their house, they've lost their animals, and it's, it's devastating. Lahaina is on fire. The historic town of Lahaina, a popular tourist and economic hub on the island's west side, particularly affected with hundreds of structures impacted. It happens so fast, people stuck in traffic trying to get out and they're, they're slain on, on both sides of the road, like something out of a, a, a horror movie. Most of the fires on Maui fueled in part by violent winds caused by Hurricane Dora, churning more than 800 miles away. Those winds now subsiding as the storm pushes away. The primary focus is to save lives and then to prevent human suffering and to mitigate great property loss. State Department crews assisting in efforts to restore communication across the islands and distribute water. With military helicopters aiding in extinguishing the fires. Two CH-47 supporting Maui County. They flew 13 hours, did 58 drops and about 150,000 uh, gallons of water to, uh, to assist with su suppression of the fire. Recovery will be a long road ahead, according to Hawaii's Lieutenant Governor Sylvia Luke. The damage to the infrastructure, it's not just... Um, Buildings. I mean, these were small businesses that invested in Maui. These were local residents. And, uh, you know, we need to figure out a way to help a lot of people in the next several years. And 11,000 people were flown out of Maui yesterday. Another 1,500 people expected to leave today. Airlines are offering reduced fares. They're also increasing the number of flights. They're trying to get people out. Officials are also asking people to cancel their plans to not come here. They want to save the resources for those who desperately need it. Victor, Poppy. Veronica Miracle, thank you for that reporting from Maui. Joining us now is pilot and director of operations for Air Maui Helicopters uh, is Richie Olson. Uh, Richie, can you hear me? We look like we have a bit of an image yeah. problem. You can hear me good? Okay, all right, we'll figure I the pictures you, out. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. um, the, the images we're seeing from, from Maui, the damage is catastrophic. We, we understand that. But as someone who has flown over Maui for more than 50 years, what does it feel like to see it this way? Well, 
when we went up in the air uh, the other morning to see what kind of damage there might have been. We never suspected that we'd see what we saw. We thought that we, from the previous night, we were watching the news and seeing the, some fires in Lahaina and so forth, and we thought that we'd, we would see some damage. But as we approached the south shore, the south end of Lahaina, and proceeded to head up the coast, uh, we were devastated by, by what we saw. It was just, uh, it was heartbreaking because I've lived here most of my life and the entire town of Lahaina is basically was burnt to the ground. The entire historic area, uh, Front Street, all the shops, uh, people's homes, hundreds of homes. It was um, the other pilots that were with me to, to view this. The, we looked at each other in disbelief. We could not believe what we were seeing. It was just, it was shocking, heartbreaking, and we're, our heart goes out to the, so many people that are displaced and homeless at this time. And we're looking at some of your video now. Uh, we've spoken to a couple of guests here who are still looking for family members, hoping to hear from friends. Are uh, all of your friends and family members there accounted for? Uh, they are. Uh, yesterday at work, we have had some employees that weren't able to be, get in touch with some of their family members, but they have now been uh, found and contacted. But, um, you know, these this is a long-term uh, situation here. These people that lost their homes, we have over 600 people in the War Memorial Stadium, the gym. We have people in our churches seeking refuge, and they have they have no place to go. They're going to have to be, have some kind of temporary uh, housing set up for these people. It's it's just it's a disaster like Hawaii has never seen. Yeah. And listen, I'll, I'll say, I'll preface this by saying it is a, a secondary or, or tertiary consideration after life and the, the homes that people have lost, every tangible thing they have. But uh, Maui relies upon tourism. You are in the tourism industry. And what this means for business uh, and, and uh, the ability to sustain this community, when you look at the destruction, how long and how badly has the community been hit and hurt? Oh, I, I don't know that Lahaina itself will actually recover from the situation, especially with the loss of, his, of the historic area of the downtown and Front Street and all the shops and businesses where all the local people that live there that work, hundreds and hundreds of people that work in that, in that Lahaina town area, you know, that there's, it's just leveled to the ground, dust and ashes at this time. So this is going to be a long-term recovery for uh, the economy for that for the entire island, let alone Lahaina itself. Well, Richie, it's a little after 2 a.m. Uh, there, and uh, I uh, hope that we can reach out to you again if you go back up and get more pictures uh, showing us what is there. Um, uh, Poppy just spoke with uh, John Kirby from the White House saying that there is federal help on the way. Uh, we're all thinking of you there uh, in Hawaii. Richie Olston, thank you so much. Thank you very much.